Number 10. Giant Canadian Geese Giant Canadian geese traditionally spend summers in Canada and head to the northern part of the U.S. for winters. In the early 1960s, people were hunting geese so much that the migratory waterbird nearly went extinct. Wildlife biologists made efforts to incubate their eggs and bring them to areas of the U.S. they were once not known to be in. It worked out a little too well. The geese fell in love with all the mown grass, the pretty ponds, cute houses and golf courses, public parks, basically they were everywhere. Their new environment was so hospitable that the geese decided to stick around all year long instead of migrating. According to different estimates, there's about 2.7 to 3.5 million geese in the U.S. right now, and their numbers could double within the next decade. This is becoming a problem for a few reasons. First of all, geese can get fat on grass and can weigh up to 24 pounds, and they poop a lot, like 50 times a day. That's about three pounds of feces every 24 hours. Multiply that by 3.5 million birds, and you've got about 10 million pounds of geese poop all over your kid's soccer field, playground, backyards, etc. And it kills a lot of grass. Also, there have been a lot of geese and plane collisions. A few years ago, a military plane crashed after hitting a flock of geese and 18 people died. Oh, and did I mention that geese are kind of mean? They're very protective over their young, and if you start to feed them bread and then stop, they might just come at you. So what's being done about them? Well, pretty much anything we can think of, but the results aren't all that successful. Do you have any ideas? Number 9. Feral Swine Another creature that you wouldn't openly suspect to be an invader of any kind is pigs, aka swine. These aren't the cute little babe pigs. These are big Pumbaa hogs. And when it comes to feral swine in the United States, these pigs are infamous for being not just invasive, but destructive. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that there are at least 6 million feral swine spread throughout some 35 states, which means that they're a widespread species and one that can damage crops and vegetation pretty much everywhere they go. Yes. That's right, these feral swine aren't just nature eaters, they're destroyers. They're even a known cause of deforestation in places all over the US. The USDA estimates, conservatively, that the invasive swine cause upward of $1.5 billion in damage annually to all manner of agriculture, including rice, corn, and grains. That is most definitely not the kind of damage that you'd expect from a pig of any kind. And yet, like many animal species, if they grow or evolve in a certain way, they can defy expectations. Number 8. Snakes in the Everglades One of the most dangerous kinds of invasions is when an animal species goes from one area to another and turns the entire ecosystem on its head. This is what has been happening out in the Florida Everglades for decades. In the 1980s, the Burmese python, a massive snake that can grow 20 feet long or more, was introduced into the Florida Everglades. The snakes have all but decimated the region's small and medium-sized mammal population, and thus the natural balance of the ecosystem has been destroyed, all because this hungry snake moved in. To add to it, female pythons can lay 50 to 100 eggs per year, and the creatures have no natural predators in the region. So while other animal populations are decreasing, the snakes are increasing. How did this madness start? Well, there are some people that have a thing for exotic pets, and the Burmese python was one that many believed would be the perfect pet for them, and so they brought them to Florida. But when those pet owners got bored with the snakes, or felt that they were too big to care for them, showing that they didn't understand how big these snakes could get, they released them out into the wild. And as noted, they can breed a lot of offspring, and the invasion began. It's gotten so bad over the years that even the authorities dedicated to go and handle the situation have no idea how many are out there. It could be tens of thousands, or it could be hundreds of thousands, says Rory Feeney, the Bureau Chief of Land Resources at the South Florida Water Management District, a federal agency that helps spearhead Everglades conservation efforts. The agency, Feeney adds, has been actively dealing with the invasive pythons for over a decade. And if you still think that this is a true invasion, think about this. 
The higher ups of Florida are so sick of these pythons that they've allowed people to hunt them down and kill them, even if they don't have a hunting license. That should show you just how desperate they are to get rid of these snakes once and for all. Number seven, crown of thorns starfish. There is an aquatic species out there known as the crown of thorns starfish. And for fans of DC comics, this might be giving you flashes of the villain Starro, complete with accurate purple coloring. But I digress. Anyway, unlike Starro and most other starfish in the sea, the crown of thorns starfish is not only massive, but it also goes beyond what it means to be a starfish. Because when you hear the name starfish, you think of a species with five arms, like Patrick Star, right? But the crown of thorns starfish can have up to 21 arms on its body. Plus, as the name suggests, this starfish has thorns that cover its entire body. These are used to protect itself from would-be predators. So what exactly makes them an invading species? Well, they're known to feed on coral reefs. With a voracious appetite and a rapid rate of reproduction, each starfish in a herd may consume up to 64 square feet of coral reefs per year. Considering that coral reefs aren't the easiest thing to grow back after being destroyed, that can cause a serious problem for underwater ecosystems. Researchers believe the outbreaks stem from human-induced changes in the ocean ecosystem, mostly increases in nutrient pollution. As a result of this, there are now population control programs that have been implemented in some areas to inject the starfish with lethal toxins. What do you think should be done about these starfish? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number six, Nutria. Nutria are also known as swamp rats and river rats. They're like a cross between a sewer rat and a beaver, and they're a big problem in places like Louisiana. So much so that they have an incentive program to get people to kill these rats for them. And some of these people are more than happy to do so, as one man brought 11,000 of these creatures in during the 2019 season. That's dedication. So how did this creature become such a pain in the butt to those in Louisiana? It's because of the fact that they were brought into the area in the 20th century to be part of the fur trade game, which makes sense as these swamp rats are able to get up to 20 pounds and thus have a lot of fur to offer. But as you might expect, the market for them declined, and thus the nutria were openly released into the wild. And like the feral swine and the pythons we mentioned before, they not only multiplied, but went on to damage all sorts of crops in the area. As if all that wasn't enough, they have a habit of actually causing terraforming, which is the process of deliberately modifying the atmosphere, temperature, surface topography, or ecology of the planet. Their extensive burrow systems can destabilize roads, bridges, levees, and golf courses, and they can transmit diseases like tuberculosis. So now you can see why Louisiana is so proactive in trying to curb this invasion of swamp rats. They're tired of their lands being altered and ruined by them. Number five, croc and gator house calls. When you typically think of crocodiles and alligators, you probably picture them in swamps or in zoo habitats, and maybe at times wanting to borrow something from your house. Seeing them out on a golf course is not exactly the most logical spot to go and view them. And yet you'd be surprised by just how many people have spotted crocs and alligators invading their golf courses and even their backyards over the years. Where is this croc invasion happening? Where else but Florida? Scientists have now even confirmed that the Nile crocodile has been found in Florida's Everglades. Wait, don't Nile crocs live in Africa? They didn't swim from Africa, but we don't really know how they got into the wild. University of Florida herpetologist Kenneth Kreisko said, male Nile crocodiles can grow over 16 feet long and weigh more than 1600 pounds. In their native sub-Saharan Africa, they're responsible for about 200 deaths every year. So how did Nile crocodiles get to Florida? The most likely explanation is that an animal trader brought them to the state illegally where he hoped to keep them as pets or worse, planned to breed them. Earlier in 2021, Mark and Jackie Bredingen had an unexpected guest show up at their front door at their Sarasota home. They heard a sound on their front porch and when they checked it out, they saw a massive gator staring at them through the window. What would you do if one of these giant reptiles tried coming into your house? Let me know in the comments below. 
Number four, cane toad backfire. When it comes to certain invasive species, a tested and proven measure that has been known to work at times is to take a potential rival animal from another region and introduce it into the new ecosystem to go and battle the species to lower the numbers down. It's worked in the past, but when that second species was the cane toad, it backfired big time. This happened to the population of sugarcane beetles that went and grew beyond what many people felt was right and fair, so they decided to bring in the cane toad from Central and South America to go and handle things for them. What they didn't anticipate, though, was that the massive and toxic toads, yes, toxic, would be even more invasive than the beetles. They started to overrun the natural order of the ecosystem, and even the crocodiles were being affected by the toads because they would affect their nests. Certain measures have been taken to try and curb the population growth, but it's been very slow going. Number three, feral domestic cats. Are you surprised? If you know the history of domestic cats, you honestly shouldn't be. It's been stated that it was the Egyptians who first truly domesticated cats, and throughout the ages, these cats have been born and even bred in order to be the perfect pets. But these cats are also known to massively populate Nature Communications estimated free-ranging domestic cats kill 1.3 to 4 billion birds and 6.3 to 22.3 billion animals annually. Holy moly! And if that's not enough for you, the various cats of the world have apparently killed over 60 species of animals. Killed, as in they made these species extinct. The problem here is that because these cats are so numerous and widespread, they're not exactly the easiest to get rid of, and hence you see the problem. They could be invading an area and you wouldn't pay it any mind because all you'd see were a bunch of stray domesticated cats. Number two, gypsy moths. Not so fun fact, gypsy moths aren't just annoying, they're a fire hazard. Already off to a great start, right? These moths were introduced to the U.S. in the early 1860s by Itne Leopold Truvu, who wanted to raise them for textile purposes due to them being able to make better materials than silkworms. But as you might expect, things went wrong. The gypsy moths blew out of the building they were in and spread like crazy. This caused a massive problem as they upset the ecosystems of the United States and over 300 million different species of trees and shrubs were in danger because of these moths merely being around. Add that to the fire hazard threat and the United States has been desperate to get rid of them, even spending tens of million dollars every single year to try and get rid of them for good. Number one, crab eating macaque monkey. We won't be monkeying around with this one. Instead, we're going to talk about a species you might not know about in regards to the crab-eating macaque monkey. Monkeys, as a whole, aren't deemed invasive for lots of reasons, including where they live and their population numbers. But the crab-eating macaque monkey is the exception to that rule and was even labeled one of nature's 100 worst invasive species. Not unlike many other species on this list, these are primates that were introduced to certain tropical areas making you wonder when humanity will learn its lessons. And once there, they happily populated their new spot and took over in grand fashion. They are prolific primates and have proven capable of invading a range of island environments following human introduction. In fact, they're even responsible for pushing endangered bird species towards extinction. As if that wasn't enough, they're not too kind to humans either and are known to behave quite aggressively. Finally, and perhaps worse of all, the monkeys are able to carry a strain of herpes virus that also infects humans. So they're bad to animals and to humankind. Not a good combination for an invasive species. Thanks for watching. What do you think of these animal invaders? Have you been affected by any of these creatures? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.